Hey guys, just been out fishing with Johnny today. Hey. You can't tell who it is because he's hiding. <laughs> he's very sun smart. You anyway, know, we went out to a little barrier, do slow pitch jigging and kabura fishing. And I uh, took the opportunity to uh, teach Johnny a little bit about slow pitch jigging. Basically just a beginner's course showing all the basics. So we've recorded all and yeah, you can watch it in this video if you're thinking about getting into slow pitch jigging. And uh, if you're into watching my tutorial videos, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you'll see a lot of tutorials popping up and lots of value add content uh, that will help you with your fishing. Cheers guys, enjoy the video. I'll show you these pliers. Look, check out how cool these pliers are. And the reason that they're really cool is how they hold the split ring apart. Watch that. Look at that. Oh, nice. Like, these are the HPA pliers. They cost over $100. Ooh. This pair of hooks already has split rings on it. So I'm going to take that off. So yeah, like the, the pliers you have, the more standard ones, they definitely do the job, but it just doesn't hold it open as well as these do. Yeah, so you might struggle to actually get the... Yeah, sometimes it doesn't open it up wide enough, the other ones. Yeah. And this one always opens it up wide enough. Nice. Yeah. The whole goal of slow pitch is we want the jig to flatter down, right? Yeah. And this one here, it's going to flatter like this. Yeah. Excuse me. And the reason we're doing that is if you think about well, how a fish want to feed, right? If you're targeting kingfish, you know that they like to chase bait, like they're used to it. Yeah. So your mechanical jigging, you're just getting it like that, just going up and up yeah. and up through the water, water column. You drop it where the kingfish is, just work it up but um every other fish that prefer an easy meal and an easy meal to them is not a fish swimming away because if you're swimming up or sideways that's a sign that the bait is strong but if, if you're gliding down or falling then that's a sign that the bait is dying like a wounded, wounded, wounded bait fish. fish yeah and to any predator that's an easy meal because they have to use the less amount of effort to go and bite it so what I'm doing with slow pitch is I'm working it up and then it just flatters down. Yep. Working it up and then it flatters down. So this reel is normally really noisy. I'm not going to use that feature. It's too noisy <laughs> for the video. But you gotta, you got to set your drag right first. I think everyone knows how to set drag. I just pull it by my hand. Send it down. So yeah, get to the bottom. Lift it up first. Yep. You don't want it to snag. So with slow pitch, you use the arm and not not have it tucked under because right. you get less motion that's this way. Yep. So it's really just resting here. Now obviously it's a bit harder on the ski, but what I'm doing is I'm using a combination of uh, the big T-bar. Yep. Like I, could, I could actually just lift it with this side if I wanted to. Like, it's actually like my right arm's not doing anything. Like, I can show you like this. Right. Yeah. Just sort of pivoting there. Yeah, it's just pivoting. So, I think the handle's really important. That's why my preference is the T-bar. The round ones are just a little bit harder to hold. Yep. And then there's also the, the smaller T, which is a bit easier. Alright, so, the easy one to start off with is just lift and let it drop. And if you watch the line, Sometimes it drops slower, like at the moment you can see it's dropped, like see that? See that was slower? Yeah. See that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a difference between like, that's fast. Look at that. A little bit slower. Yeah. And that's when it's fluttering down, because I've got the video footage of that. Yeah. To show the flutter. The, the jig uh, is so well balanced that it just flutters down. And, it, and the fish, they see it. And they don't always see like the full size going down. Yeah. That's why sometimes you get trevally who feed on, you know, they don't go bite big pieces of fish. No. They like little cubes. Yep. They eat krill. So sometimes they just see that profile. Small flash. Just small flash, yeah. As if the jig is like facing them front on. In a nutshell, this is the first stage to slow pitch. You just hold it right, use the right gear, and yeah, if there's fish there, 
yep. we'd be catching them. This is just holding it on the same spot. So yeah, this little gadget here, it's actually, it's a rod protector for the rod holder because you know, like these rods are, you know, the whole whole rod is sensitive, yep. thin, you want to look after it. Yep. So this one in the rod holder is what protects it. But the second thing is it's the extra comfort for resting on my arm. So right. see here, if you, you can wind it around, there's a different shape, it's round and there's flat. Yep. You just put the flat part on your arm because the round part's got the cable tie stuff as well. So it just sits there. So the second second part of slow pitch you can do is just the reel. So this reel's got a really high ratio. You can see it's 7.3 and then it winds a lot of line yep. each time. I think it's 106 centimeters. Wow. So like that full wind, like that's going up 106 centimeters. It doesn't feel like it, but it's doing that. Yeah. And what you'll see is the rod is going to load up yeah. and it's going to spring it up a little bit. So I might be getting 110 centimeters if I do a full wind. Yeah. A full wind is quite cumbersome. So normally you just get half. Right. Huh? And this is the second slow pitch. You don't read the yeah. rod. Yeah. So it's just pitching itself, like going up, pitch it up, flutters down. Pitch up, flutters down. It's still getting a little bit of fall action. Maybe like 40 centimeters. And then combining the two is where you feel like you're doing the most. You're getting that one meter lift, and then I'm doing a half wind. So that's giving it another 50 centimeters. So this is 1.5, basically. Yeah. Or four time. Four time is what I'm going for. If you're doing the bottom 10 meters, and Snapper will swim up to 20 meters. Yeah. We've seen that happen. Uh, it could be watching it now and just chasing it up. There's also going to be kingfish and kawai everywhere through the water column. Mm -hmm. There's going to be trevally everywhere through the water column. So you could work it all the way up to the surface. And it's supposed to be very low impact type of fishing. A bit hard now because we're a bit cramped up. <laughs> but you should be able to you know, slow pitch at least half a day comfortably like this. If you're, if you're standing right. So I find it really important in slow pitch. Especially like see how my rod is traditional overhead. Yep. And your rod is spiral wrap yep. or acid wrap. With my rod, it's really important to be watching your line and controlling the speed. Right. So see if I go too fast. Yeah, it's in time. Yeah. It's tip wrapping. Yeah, yeah there's a it. chance of it tip wrapping. Which, yeah, it happened a couple of times. So I gotta go like this and just watch that I let it drop back in time. Uh, less of a chance on your one in the long run, but more comfortable using a spiral wrap yep. rod for slow pitch. Yeah, slow pitch is just keep practicing it and eventually you don't need to think about what you're doing yeah it just becomes a rhythm what kind of species have you caught on a slow pitch almost everything now kingfish snapper kawai gurnard gurnard's normally near the bottom yeah trevally anywhere uh frostfish was probably my weirdest catch that's pretty cool also when you slow pitch, and probably easier on the boat, is the boat motion helps with slow pitch as well. And you find that you tend to do your jigging in time with when the boat's moving. Right. So say if the boat's going up, then you could go up at the same time. You get even more of a... Yeah, like not on purpose, but, on but it actually yeah helps a little bit. Like say if I rock the ski now, and we go up as we go back, then they, like normally that's what it feels like on a boat. Yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of motion. We've got two types of slow pitch rods. Yep. The one I'm using now, it's called the Origin Slow Jigging. So Ocean's Legacy Origin Slow Jigging. Mm -hmm. And this one is the probably the most original right. of the slow pitch rods. And in that saying that it's purely designed for slow pitch, so it's got the it has the right motion, but when you hook the fish you can't use the rod to fight the fish while it's got a lot of strength in the back end yeah it doesn't have the strength in the front end to fight the fish because the focus has been to give it that flexibility to work the jig so that's what this rod is so when i hook a fish with the slow origin and if it's a big fish like a kingy i actually point it down oh, okay. and use the reel to sort of crank the fish in yeah. Or you, yeah, use the power of the reel to wind the fish in. And it's fine with the rod sticking in the water. There's never been any issue with that. But on a general small fish, you can you can play it as normal. Yeah. Like lift it high, 
wind on the way down, lift it high on the way down, that's okay. fine with this rod. But you can see it's it's so thin yep. and so sensitive. So designed to work the jig, feel the bite, get the hook up. And then there's now also a new design which is called uh, power slow pitch and it, it's, it meets sort of the best of both worlds. You get that sensitivity of a slow pitch rod yep. at the right length uh, which is about 6.2 feet uh, and that's what you're using now. You're using the new Alimentus uh, okay. and the Alimentus absolutely has the strength all the way through the blank for you to fight the fish. Right. So if you hook up a fish today, go this high if you want to. Yeah. when you're fighting it because it's designed to handle that, that strength. the the strength of it the p3 version when you're using the p2 it can lift i think it's 31 kilos up to 45 degrees yeah, that's a lot. yeah like that 31 kilos Ruff, roughly that way i can't remember the exact stat so you're using the p2 version mm -hmm. there's the p3 and also p4 which is what i have in the heavy slow pitch setup i've got with the accurate that should be a keeper. Just off the bottom actually. Mm. But no sign. Yeah, so see like because it's not a big fish, I can lift it. Yeah. Like the rods, no problem with that. It's got plenty of grunt. Yeah. But yeah, on a kingy, don't do yeah. this. Play this off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let the, let the reel bring it in. This is uh this might be foul hooked because of the weight. It's a heavy weight coming up. Yeah, I can see it spinning around. Could be a Oh, that's a keeper. Yeah, that's a keeper. Oh, you're right. Oh, it was hooked properly, and then the other hook got him yeah, the on other. the side. Yeah, yeah. that's a keeper. That'll be like 33, I reckon. Can you step up. Ta -da. That's hanging out. All right, we're just drifting over. Nothing. There's no sign. We're in about 50 meters of water. All hope is lost. <laughs> <laughs> But we're hooking up the odd fish here and there. <laughs> Neighbours, not me. See how strong the reel is? It just like yeah. cranks it up. Good size. Ooh, Ooh it's a fat penny. <laughs> Alright, it's good for Johnny to see the slope pitch actually works. Mm. That I'm not making it up in my videos. <laughs> There has been some doubts. <laughs> I believe in you. Thanks okay. mate. That's on the sardine still. 170 gram. Oh, that's 130 gram. 130 gram long contact sardine. So see there's dual hooks on this um, on this jig. So it's safer to use pliers as much as possible. Ta-da! Oh yeah, so with these jigs, what I do, you can see the setup here. So we've got a solid ring. Yep. Yep. And then a split ring, and then that connects to the jig. Yep. And then also the split ring uh, connects to the assist, the solid ring of the hook. So that, I find, gives it the most motion. Yep. Because your hook can pretty much fling around in any direction. Nice and free. Yeah. And also, uh, what makes this easy when you need to change weight or change lures altogether but normally you're just changing weights and you're just keeping the same hooks on there ah, okay. so now i can just take the jig off changing weight or changing jig and then i can go and pop whatever next jig on yep. that i need so these are the two jigs that we have this is the ocean's legacy long contact i've got it in 130 gram but that goes from 30 gram on the long contact mini up to 90 grams and then it goes 130 gram all the way up to 270 gram as a long contact and this one is the one that uh, sort of shimmers down it's it's balanced weight and it just uh, goes down like this very gradually which you mean you know you'll be feeling yep. on your setup this is called the hybrid contact and this was the the first one that was launched by oceans legacy and the design of this is to move like a squid so it actually goes like a, a squid or a leaf side, yeah. yeah in terms of its movement uh, this one you really you need to have a very slow drift to work it because of the extra larger profile 
it's going to get a bit more water resistance. Yep. So we'll flood it down slower, but if the drift is too fast, it's going to carry too far out behind your boat. Uh, whereas the long contact, uh, you can use that in a faster drift. Yeah, so we're in a slower drift now, so give this one a go. And yeah, typically you just put the hook side, uh, the hook onto the side where the eye is, or on the lighter side, because it's it's bottom weighted. Yeah. Because you don't want to put it here, and it's going to go all funny yeah, when yeah. it's sinking down. It sinks down this way. Yeah. Let's show you the line counter now. So this is quite quite oh. loud. So you just do that to turn it on, and that's zero meters. Yeah. And it's basically going to uh, tell me the depth. You can see the jig. See how it's starting stopping. Yeah. That's it fluttering down. Now, uh, this is actually not the ideal way for a jig to go down. Like this is obviously, it's got the action on the way down, but yeah. it's not going down as fast as you, you know, to the bottom. Yeah. So you actually want to like put a little bit of pressure to hold the line, just a tiny bit, so that it's just going to fall straight right. down without it fluttering. And that's one of the slow pitch uh, strategies to employ yeah. when you drop the lure down. If you feel it's fluttering too much, hold the line a little bit and let it go down. A good way to control it. Yeah. Just gets it down faster, get it into the strike zone. So yeah, you can see the depth, 52 meters. So I can see, you know, I can stop before it gets to the bottom, tell where the fish is holding if I hook up. If I hook up at 47 meters, then I'll be like, oh yeah, next yeah. time put it at 47 meters. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if we can catch anything at this spot. Oh, it's not big, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> felt the hit. Gave me a fright. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I keep clipping myself. <laughs> that thing. Well, it's decent weight. Like this fight would be too boring for you. Like you wanna, you know, right. winch, do the help. Lift and wind, lift and wind. But this actually like holds it, the hook more steady. Yeah. Yeah, you got constant pressure. Oh, eh? oh, just under size. You go. Look at wings. Jetski. Cheers, Dave. Mm. See if we can catch a fish. Thanks. Oh, 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 man. Oh, 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 the best eating lunch and watching Dave catch fish. I reckon we need a net for this one. I'm gonna put this down somewhere. Same with like fishing, I found. The level of hygiene goes like way down the hill. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've handled fish. Lick your fingers, yep. eat some chips. Yep. Have some KFC. It doesn't matter. Wash it with salt water. Right, this is a. <clears throat> It's a bad example of um, actual slow pitch jigging, but a good example that the lure just works. Just hold it there, and the fish come and chomp on it. What is that? What? Whoa! The... Is that like a ling? Is it a red cod? It's a red cod. You got a red cod. Are they yum or yuck? Um, they're okay. They're average. Average? You can make fish cakes out of them. Alright. Dude, that is a heavy red cod, man. Oh, it's a red cod. Wow. Yeah, really good for fish cakes. Okay. How do I fish cake? Put it in a blender. <laughs> Wait, why is it bad for eating and good for fish cakes? What's the theory there? Uh, I think it's just the texture. Mushy? Not very good, yeah. Red cod on the uh, <laughs> slow pitch. When you go to get a slow pitch rod, you either get this one, which is the um, our higher end specialized, like strong slow pitch rod, yep. or get the, um, the element, okay. which is the, the cheaper version. Yeah, it's still designed to be strong. Okay. I mean, like, you can get something like this, but 
you have more fun on a rod that you can high stick. Right, yeah. Yeah, just, you know, fight the fish yeah. with the rod. Just more versatility. Yeah. Must be the KFC. Yeah, KFC. Mmm. Every time. <laughs> Johnny, you gotta eat and fish at the same time. That's the trick. Alright. Now I've gotta net the fish for you. Oh, true. Oh, I'm getting my like, real, all greasy now. Oh! oh. Yeah. That was a good fish. Fluffing around too much. Man. Yeah, big snap. That was not a red cod. No. Oh well. Mm. More chicken. How's that happening? That was a good fish, man. Mm. Do some donuts, Johnny. Hey. Do some donuts. <laughs> I'll jump on this side. Uh, wait. What? You're going on this side? Yeah. I don't want to step on that crap. Uh. You're alright, you just spin it. Yeah. You're gonna reverse him. Don't blow shit at me. 